You all know the wedge analysis. In 2004, two Princeton professors come up with the, anal the analysis of the wedges. They look at business as usual emissions, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions going up. And they look at the trajectory of emissions where they have to go in order to stabilize the planet. At that time, they were hoping to stabilize at 500 parts per million, which most science now says is way, way too high. But nonetheless, they found that there was a big gap between where we need to go and where we are. And in order to try to think about that gap in, in sort of intellectually manageable chunks, they divided it into a bunch of wedges. Each wedge was a billion tons of carbon dioxide pollution, a billion tons of greenhouse gas pollution. And they said, look, you know, you can fill this big wedge with a, with a number of little wedges. And you can have a nuclear power wedge, a solar wedge, a vehicle efficiency wedge, a household efficiency wedge. And to give an idea of the scale that was required, they tried to show what would it take to get a billion tons by a switch to wind energy. What would it take, how many nuclear reactors would it take to get a billion tons of, of carbon dioxide reduction from the current electricity if we go to nuclear power? So we looked at that and noted that they're all technological responses. And actually, Jonathan Rose, who is our host here, thank you, uh, came up with the idea of, well, how about a behavioral wedge? Rather than a technological wedge, could we, in fact, get a billion tons just by taking personal action? So we set to work on that to try to figure out if, in fact, we could get to a billion tons. And, you know, one of the challenges, as was just talked about, is the sense of, well, if you take personal action, am I just a chump? Uh, I know I certainly felt that. Uh, we at home were put solar panels on our house and we turn the thermostat down, we hang dry the laundry, and our neighbor, meanwhile, expands his house, keeps it heated all winter when he's not there and has floodlights on his flag all night long. And, you know, you, uh, not exactly what I view as patriotic, but in any event, um, it, it, you feel a little challenged uh, because all, are all my efforts going to not? So, in fact, if we all work together, can we make a significant difference? And then what do you, where does that significant difference take us? So, we looked at that, and uh, after a number of work, largely looking at other studies, government data, private data, about the impact of, say, turning down your thermostat one degree during the winter, will save a couple percentage on your energy bill. If you turn it up a couple uh, degree in the summer, it may be save 3% of your energy bill. If you add all those things up, can you get to a billion tons? And this was, we acknowledge, a, in a sense, a theoretical construct because we were trying to figure out, okay, how many people should we figure out are doing this? So we said, let's assume, for purposes of the analysis, everybody in America does this. Now, 100% is a pretty high uptake, right? I'll grant you that. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's a pretty significant challenge that we have ahead of us. And we can also, you can imagine, in any of the measures that are in this behavioral wedge, changing the amount of it and having the a number of people who did it. But it's really a construct to show that it's possible. And by the way, on your tables, are a number of copies of this paper, which uh, will be talking about, which has much of what I'm talking about. So if you don't want to listen to me, you can just read that. Uh, but what it turned out is that there are a number of actions we can take, and it, I think with a fair degree of confidence, we can indeed say that if every American did a number of actions that are essentially free, that are within their own control, and that can be done pretty quickly, we could, we as a country, acting together, could reduce emissions by about a billion tons. That's the equivalent of roughly the country of Germany. Uh, it's a lot, a, a major, the U.S., as you know, is about 7 billion tons, so it's about 15% of U.S. emissions. And some of them are, I think, pretty obvious, many of you will think about, flying less. For many of us, flying is our biggest uh, carbon footprint. And so we said, look, if you only fly a couple times a year for vacation, it's pretty hard to ask somebody not to do that. But some of us fly a lot, uh, and maybe just taking one flight less, if you fly more than three times a year, you can reduce, I think it's 125 million tons. Uh, 
And I'll tell you, you can also at the same time live a lot better. I just took the red eye in from California. I can promise you I'm looking forward to giving up at least one flight a year. Uh, you can also, in the, in the transportation arena, idle less. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of idling. How many times have you sat, somebody comes up to you, drives up, sees you on the street, and as they chat with you for 15 minutes, leave their car running the whole time? And of course, you're, you, you are tempted to reach in and turn off their uh, key because you're breathing their fumes. But nonetheless, uh, we idle a tremendous amount. Uh, I used to work for New York City, and we had a whole enforcement in that effort to get buses to idle less. Buses would sit in front of schools and <laughs> idle, poisoning the kids. Uh, so you can idle less, you can save, reduce greenhouse gas emissions tremendously, and at the same time, you'll breathe a lot cleaner air. Um, some of those other things that I mentioned, turning the thermostat down in your house just a degree or two and save energy, and finally you'll get to wear all those sweaters your grandmother has given you. I mean, you'll feel good about that. Uh, tremendous numbers of opportunities just unplugging electronics, really simple things. Uh, drying your clothes uh, at, at home on a rack. All of these you can actually add up, you can see the impacts of these, and they make a big difference. One of the uh, interesting areas that will probably be not a surprise to anybody here is food. You may only choose every now and then to buy a new car. So we did not include, because that's not really behavioral, cashing in your, or changing your Hummer for a Prius. Uh, but you can decide how you idle every day. But really, three times a day you make food choices. Uh, and it's really a surprise for a lot of people to realize that by moving from red meat to chicken, or from moving from, uh, from dairy to vegetarian, just a couple times a week can probably be the most significant thing you can do. Now, it's an interesting aside here, and Jonathan and I have talked about this, uh, and at NRDC we're, we're struggling with this a little bit. Food choices are intensely personal, people think. So it's very hard to talk about this. It's one thing to talk about changing incandescent bulbs for CFLs. That's okay, and people don't get too upset about that, but you can very easily start being accused of being preachy or intrusive or holier than thou or all sorts of other things uh, that I probably shouldn't mention in public if you start suggesting people think about their diet. And the good thing, of course, is you don't necessarily have to make one big choice. You don't have to become a vegan. Three times a day you have a choice of what you eat. So tremendous opportunities there by slight changes of your behavior to make a big difference. So again, if you take all of these and they're in the paper that are on the table, it will soon, is it already up on our website? By this evening. By this evening, it will be up on our website. Uh, and I think tomorrow, uh, NRDC and the Garrison Institute will be together trying to get some press on this. Uh, we can reduce the US emissions by 15% uh, by the equivalent of Germany by a billion tons. And it's a really a remarkable thought that, in fact, you don't have to feel like a chump. In fact, if we all do this together, we can make a real difference. And then again, it goes back to, okay, if you are doing this, and I'm sure any of you have found this in your own lives, if you start taking some of these actions, you actually pay a little more attention to those articles in the newspapers about why or whether the Senate is doing anything and why aren't they doing anything. And maybe you'll be a little less tolerant of the excuses, whether it be some company that you're working with, why they can't take some action, change their product, change their production technologies. Uh, and as I said, most significantly, try to get some uh, action here so that we get the government to move. So it's a pretty simple concept. Personal action makes a big difference. Uh, but the exciting part is that personal action, if we all do it, it can make a really big difference. It can make a difference that is globally significant and then lead, we hope, to even more action. So that's a quick short of it.